as you walk up the starboard side of this Fleming 58, the first thing you feel is secure. And that is because of the long handrail that runs along the superstructure, which is directly opposite the gunnels. This walkway is also wide enough to ensure that you don't have to adopt a funny walk as you make your way forward to the bow. As you walk up to the Portuguese bridge, you will notice the door on the starboard side that gives you entry onto the bow of this stunning boat. There is another door on the port side too. There is also a locker and some deck lighting that gives this motor yacht a fantastic warm glow once the sun goes down. As you look over the Portuguese bridge, you are met with a really well laid out bow with plenty of cleats, some more handrails for safety and twin windlasses on the forepeak. I also love the Fleming flag that is positioned right on the bow of this elegant motor yacht. And check out the windows on the bridge. They look like they have been designed to take the force of some big waves. The engineering throughout this boat is just incredible. Again, you can see another handrail located just under the windows. Anyone who has spent a decent amount of time motoring in rough weather will confirm just how vital these handrails are. They can be a lifesaver when the weather decides to take a turn for the worst. Now let us check out the wheelhouse as we enter from the port side. As my regular viewers will know, the helm station is my favourite part of any vessel. So let us highlight what is in front of us. We have two large displays. The port one is being used for the digital charts, whilst the starboard one is being used for the radar display. We have a large comfortable chair for the captain, with a CCTV monitor over here. We also have the traditional Fleming wheel with the engine controls to starboard. And how handy is this? A set of controls which means the captain won't have to keep leaning forward for control inputs such as changes of course etc. If like me then you have a dodgy back from too much heavy deck work, then this sort of detail is a godsend. Now I know for some this might be a minor detail, but as someone who has spent a lot of time on the bridge of several warships and the lifeboat whilst navigating at night, I love the extendable light here that sits atop this handy table, which could be used for traditional charts. I also love this seating area behind the helm. As you are keeping watch on those long passages between destinations, you're probably going to want some company at some point. Well, I probably would anyway. Now it's time to ascend these three steps up onto the flybridge and boat deck. On the day that I visited this Fleming 58, the weather wasn't particularly good, which is why the seating's covered. One of the things I love here is that the boat deck has its own separate launching area for the tender. If you needed to, then you could easily launch this tender single-handedly. As a former lifeboatman, it would be wrong of me not to point out the sea survival equipment here, which includes the life raft, a lifebuoy, 
and what I think is the throw line. If you own a boat but do not have these yet, then I will add a link to where you can buy them in the video description. The helm position on the flybridge is located on the port side of the vessel. As well as a large comfy seat, there are two large flat screen displays, as well as repeater displays and engine controls. Now let's just head back down into the wheelhouse, have another quick look around before heading out onto the port side of the vessel. As you walk around the Fleming 58, you really get a sense of being aboard a little ship. Now, for me, this adds to the overall feelings of seaworthiness and safety that you would ordinarily automatically get from being on much larger vessels. As we peer over the transom, you'll see a large swim deck with the passerelle on the port side. Okay, now let us head into the main salon. The galley is located on the port side and its functional and practical layout helped to make mealtime a complete breeze. There's stacks of storage space and also a double sink. To the forward position of the double sink is a coffee machine and above that we have got loads more storage space as well as melee appliances. There's even enough space for a large fridge freezer. This area of any motor yacht is really important and being stood in here I get a sense of comfort and exemplary craftsmanship. The large windows allow lots of natural light to flood into the area. Now let us head down into the accommodation areas. This full beam cabin is just huge and look at all that storage space. The carpentry in here is just exquisite. As we head into the bathroom, again you're met with exemplary craftsmanship in a large area. Even the shower in here is, is just huge. I'm six foot four and I could easily fit in here and, well, have a good time. The combination here of mirrors as well as natural light coming from the porthole really give a light and airy sense and feel to this area. Again, there are repeater controls and other controls that you'll find in here as well. And look at all the indirect lighting in this cabin. I think it just creates a fantastic ambiance. It really does help to make you feel relaxed, welcome, cozy and at home. And I think that's what you want in any cabin, is that sense of feeling at home, of being around your creature comforts. This vanity area is large, bright and airy and there is stacks of storage space for all of your personal belongings. These two portholes allow lots of fresh air and light into the area. As you can see the cupboards are just huge. Let's head out back into this communal area. Even the stairs just give this sense of just luxury and comfort 
there's another porthole which allows more natural light into the area and these spotlights really help to illuminate what would otherwise be a dark area. In this cabin we have twin bunks. Above the top bunk you'll find two portholes again which allow lots of fresh air and natural light to flood the area. Let us now take a look at the twin cabin forward which has been configured as a V berth. Each bunk has its own reading lights as well as ample storage both under and to the side. These spotlights combine with the indirect ambient lighting and the window hatch in the overhead again give this cabin a light and airy feel coupled with a sense of warmth and luxury that is hard to match. Overall the accommodation on the Fleming 58 is really well laid out. As I said before I am 6 foot 4 and not once when in the accommodation area did I feel cramped in. In fact I felt the opposite. Regardless of which cabin you are lucky enough to stay in, you will feel at home. The friendly people at Fleming were also happy to allow me to have a nosy around this immaculate engine room. Now I have been in a lot of different engine rooms, but this one is just unbelievable. Considering this yacht is 5 years old, looking around here you wouldn't think it. I am no engineer, far from it, but the layout down here coupled with the ease of access when it comes to being able to get to the yacht's essential systems is impressive. I even told the Fleming representatives that I would be happy to sleep down here and when you compare this area to the accommodation on a Type 22 Royal Navy frigate which was my first ship in the Royal Navy then you will see why I would and could sleep down here as long as we weren't underway. As we all know, the engine room is the heart of any motor yacht. And this engine room felt healthy, fit and oozed endurance. These twin engines are built to go on and on and on. In summary, there are lots of things I love about the Fleming 58. From the wide walkways on the port and starboard side, which are also adorned with potentially life-saving features, right through to the thoughts that has gone into making sure that the owner can operate this stunning vessel with minimal crew. Serious seafarers buy Fleming's boats because they want to be sure that when the seas turn rough, then they can carry on cruising with peace of mind. But not only that, when you are at anchor in a far off and idyllic location, then you will be able to enjoy the sort of comforts that will make you want to stay on your boat for as long as possible. What do you think of the Fleming 58? Let me know in the comments section below the video. Please don't forget to give this video a like and to subscribe to my channel. Before you go, don't forget to sign up to my free newsletter. The link is in the video description. And if you would like to see some behind the scenes videos and other extra content, then please consider becoming a member of my channel. By clicking on the link that is going to appear now, you can find out a bit more information about becoming a member. 
So until next time, fair winds and following seas, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.